It's the first extension to London's underground of the 21st century. Part of a wider regeneration project in the Battersea area. We've been given exclusive access to explore before the public does. Today we're visiting two amazing stations, Nine Elms and Battersea Power Station. Welcome everyone to a really special Hidden London Hangout today. For most of the series, we spend our time going to places that have been closed for years and years and years. Today, we went to a place which is not even open to the public yet. It's the Northern Line extension. We're so excited to be able to show you this stuff. Hopefully, you're seeing it here first. I don't do this on my own. I've got three amazing people from the London Transport Museum to guide us through this amazing project and to have a look around the stations that occupy that line. First of all, Chris Nix from the London Transport Museum. What a day we had in our exclusive look around. Hi, Alex. It's so exciting. Uh, it's a heck of a lot of work to pull this scoop off. But uh, yeah, not only the stations, but also the train and the tunnels. Amazing stuff. And Siddy, yeah, loads of emails backwards and forwards. Could we please come in and see this? And they said yes. Weren't we delighted? I know it was so amazing. And we got to not only visit the stations, as, as we said, but as Chris said as well, we went to uh, got to go on the train. Well, Chris took one for the team and went on the train and did some uh, amazing shots for us in the tunnels. It's just beautiful to see where the engineering of the underground has got to today. Absolutely love it. Laura Hilton Brown, so much to look at today, isn't there? There's a lot to go at, isn't there? And I love that we've done a little bit of a switcheroo, like you said, you know, Hidden London um, and the Hangouts are so used to going into these spaces, you know, and telling the stories after their journey. But, you know, what we're going to do here or what we've got to do here was go into these spaces kind of at the beginning of their journey. Their life is just about to start. And that was, for me, that was really exciting. Oh, it's great. Absolutely. We had such a good day looking around. So thank you very much, mm. TFL, for letting us do this. And all the members of staff who've been working on this project so hard to get it to the point where we're at today. The excitement is building. There's great stuff to show you. First of all, Chris, just give us a potted history of the Northern Line extension to Battersea so far. This will be a very short one. Batsy Power Station and Nine Elms Station opened as part of the Northern Line extension on the 20th of September, 2021. Isn't that's that great? It. That is the history lesson <laughs> of this. That's it. Uh, three kilometres of track, two amazing stations and four very happy people going and having a look around. First of all, Chris, show us a couple of pictures before these amazing videos come our viewers way. So this was the day of our visit showing uh, Battersea Power Station sat in its, uh, its environment with the original Battersea Power Station in the background. Gorgeous stuff. Absolutely Great. lovely. Oh. And since when yeah. we got there, it was builders everywhere, wasn't it? It was still being sorted out. It was like mm -hmm. moving into a brand new house. Oh, yeah. And, and exactly because it was mostly landscapers outside sorting out kind of the outside area of the station because the station itself is pretty much ready or when we went it was ready so it was mostly sort of doing lots of bits about you know the, the area around it i must say i love this shot chris um it really highlights how much that area has uh changed in the last what two decades but even in the in the last 11 years since i've lived in london i mean wow it's really changed oh thanks city yeah it's a testimony to how far i can stretch my arm up over a hoarding to uh, to take that photo <laughs> you did really really well indeed and laura i mean the thing that struck us is about the location of that station that area really needs a tube station does it because we walked to Vauxhall afterwards it was quite a walk yeah, there's been a lot of development and regeneration in that area. Um, and I think each one of us had kind of like some connection or affiliation with that area. I, I lived obviously in Kennington, so we spent quite a lot of time in that area. And as Siddy said, I think she runs around there as well. And over the kind of years, how much it's changed from being kind of, you know, quite, um, you know, there wasn't a lot there. And now you've got buildings and a real skyline starting to form. And I don't know about you guys, but we managed to meet some staff um, at both of the stations. And I felt a really good energy with them and the space itself. And I just, I think that when you feel, get a feel for a space like that, you just know that it's going to be really cool. Do you know, you read my mind. I was going to ask you about the staff. Absolutely, wasn't it? It was wonderful to see such happy faces. And Chris, there's one other photograph you want to show us because th this, this whole project, has given the most photogenic places to uh, to be in, hasn't it? 
It has. And uh, the next one is where we're going to start our journey, which, of course, it's, it's great having the stations. You need a train to be able to run into them. And uh, this is the crossover, uh, the track crossover, just uh, outside of Batty Power Station. Beautiful stuff. Wow. Now, if you know anything about the local area, you'll know that the two tracks that feed Nine Elms and Battersea are cut into the Kennington Loop. We've got an episode about Kennington. If you want to learn more about that, just go back and watch that. But this is Chris and his lucky, lucky moment of going on a train and then doing a track walk into those stations. Tonight, I'm at Golders Green on a special mission on behalf of the Hidden London Hangout team. We're going to the Northern Line extension. This is a Northern Line train terminating at Battersea Power Station. Exit here for National Rail Services from Battersea Park and Queenstown Road. 
And here we are at a new end to the Northern Line. Uh, that's five ends to the Northern Line, I think, if I've counted correctly. The train that I've travelled down on is uh, being used to train drivers on this new route through Nine Elms to where I am now at Battersea Power Station. And we are going to have a look around the station later in the week with the rest of the crew. But I've popped down to have a little recce and also have a look at the line itself. So, traction currents confirmed off, so you can come on down. So at Hill London, we like to not only go to places that you can't go to because they're old, but also because you can't go to because they're not yet open. And I'm here at uh, Battersea Power Station, brand new, with a train sleeping there at night. And more importantly, I'm here with a very special person who's enabled us to come down here, Alex garnett Shearer. Thank you so much for letting us uh, come down here and facilitating the access. You're so welcome. As I say, it's uh, great that we're finally going to get to open soon. So uh, we're really looking forward to uh, getting customers onto the section. And the key thing is that the stations are all lovely and we'll go and have a proper look at those. But they're no use whatsoever without the business end, which is the running tunnels, which we're going to go and have a look at. Um, and you're part of the team that's got to get people familiarised with these tunnels and driving trains through. How's that going so far? So it's been a lot to do. Uh, obviously, COVID has made things even more difficult for us, um, but we're taking it day by day. Um, we have a number of people trained up on the section now, um, but obviously when it started, there was a lot of people to train. Uh, we've got almost 800 drivers um, on the Northern Line. So there's a lot of people still that we still have to get through. Um, but it is literally a case of we've utilised engineering works uh, over, over the past few months. So we've been able to get some people trained up, but there is still more to do. And obviously we've got new train drivers coming through all the time. So the, the training is continuous. Now, now I know my way around tunnels. I've been around them as long as I've been at the museum. These ones look a lot different to what I'm used to. They are indeed, they're vast. Uh, we now have a lot of more safety protocols and we've got a lot more understanding of engineering over the years. Obviously, if you were on a standard uh, tube tunnel, the diameter is literally enough to fit a tube train. Now we're actually going to be able to have a walkway to the side of it. Uh, it follows a similar principle to the Elizabeth Line operations, which will have the walkway, but that will be at uh, train level. This is actually going to be at track level, so there is still quite a difference, but it's very similar to tunnelling procedures. Cool. Well, should we go and have a look and head Indeed, up to Indeed, let's have a go. Hours? So this will obviously, in the event of an emergency, give us the idea of do I go to Battersea or do I walk to Nine Elms? So we're about halfway, aren't we, between Battersea Power Station and Nine Elms. Um, but notably, the tunnel's a bit different here. What, what's going on? So between uh, Battersea and Kennington, we do have some cross passageways. The purpose of the cross passageways is obviously it gives us opportunities to put in uh, maintenance equipment. And obviously, we then get access because there's two different shafts. Uh, that have been, or bores that have been dug. You've got the northbound running line, you've got the southbound running line. So there are no connections other than the cross passages that we've got, so to speak. So uh, as operational staff, we can identify where we're at now uh, and that training for new staff is going through. You can see we've now got this level area here. Mm -hmm. So it just enables us to then identify the area more easily in the event of any incident. Right, and I, I was just looking around in the tunnel because last time I came to the uh, extension site, it was just as the tunnel boring machines were launching. And I remember seeing some of these concrete rings stacked up, waiting, the segments rather, waiting to go in and construct this tunnel. What I didn't see though, is this more modern cast iron ring. They're absolutely huge. I've never seen anything like those, much bigger than the, uh, the traditional uh, traditional ones that uh, the old tube was built out of. I can definitely say that uh, as somebody that's walked all of the Northern Line between Edgware and Morden uh, via the cross, they definitely are the largest I've ever seen. It's great to see what the future holds. Grand, on to Nine Elms then. Indeed, on to Nine Elms. As we approach Nine Elms Station, 
I was awed by the experience of the track walk and concentrating hard on not falling whilst both crossing the track and filming. Perhaps that's why, at this moment, I forgot I was supposed to be presenting a TV show. What I would have pointed out here is how clean the track bed is, the emergency walkway on the left, how impressive I found the view of the station, and that every noise in the tunnel sounded unnervingly like it might be a train in the distance coming towards us. But until I suddenly remember I'm a presenter again, please enjoy a quiet moment of exploration. I could have gone up on the platform, but we're going to do that with the rest of the team. So let's look at it from the angle we can't do normally. Heavens, that was just fabulous. Chris, you walked down tunnels. You've done what we all wanted to do. It's amazing. I've got to say, it was the easiest track walk I've ever done, because normally when you're walking on tracks, it's ballast and sleepers and loads of obstructions. This one has a purpose-built emergency walkway next to it. So it was it was actually the fastest way to walk between Battersea Power Station and Nine Elms is down that tunnel. And is that quite unique, that passageway at the side? It, it is. I think it will be unique because the modern standard with, with trains is that you have a, a walkway to the side of the train which is level with the train but because this is a modification to an old system they've done it down at uh, at track level so it's very unusual uh, but very helpful marvelous stuff well look it's all very well uh, the girls and me had no interest in that one because it was a midnight on friday so chris went and did it on his own but what we did do yeah. together was we went and saw the stations the bit that you're all interested in and probably the bit that you're going to be visiting first so we started our little trip at the two stations at nine elms here we go nine elms station this is very very exciting oh, no member of the public has been through this station and we are here thrilled tickled skinny well not quite so skinny <laughs> after three lockdowns but what do you think girls first oh, impressions it looks amazing it really does and you know what's really interesting as well the blue seems a little paler on nine elms station on that sign but still beautiful we've got the roundel in the background we've got those massive gates very sort of square blocky construction goes with all the blocks of flats around here as well yeah but you know what this really actually reminds me of this kind of horizontal lines all of it kind of a bit Charles Holden, isn't it? Let's go in and have a look. Hmm. Yeah, see that? The windows. Yeah, and it really is. I tell you, there's, there's really something exciting about being somewhere that the public haven't been yet. Hmm. Normally we do stuff where the public don't go anymore, yeah. but this yeah, is the other true. way around. And it really is, as you say, very, very Charles Holden, yeah. very straight lines, oblongs, rectangles. The windows here, the two kind of stories, so you have like the middle bit there and then the story and the entrance. I mean, it's like a big version of Acton Town. And then look at this round here. I'm going to take hold of the camera now because Mr Nix quite clearly wants to get very excitable about everything you can see. Well. It's a big station box, which is brilliant, um, yeah. but it's got some really unusual features, some which we've seen before. Uh, if you're a big Hidden London fan, you've been on the tours, particularly at Charing Cross, mm. you'll have seen that trick over on the escalators there mm, before yeah. with the lighting, uh, where they use lighting on the escalators rather mm. than lighting hung from the ceiling. Saves a lot on maintenance and scaffolding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really quite interesting because these portals are so large but this just means that the flow of people once this is what gets put into use is going to be so much breezier and easy and easier the scale of it is incredible yeah. isn't it it is i think when you're you're behind the barrier and then you're behind the door and you're allowed into this space and it's light isn't it it's yeah. there's lots of light in here lots of lovely natural light which yeah. is just perfect for a new station so shiny and there's a real sense of grandeur and arrival yeah. as you come in. Yeah. Uh, quite a lot of rebuilt stations particularly tend to be quite low and cramped. Mm. You feel a bit mean when you go in. This one, whoa. This one's kind. Yeah. This one's not mean. <laughs> also, I've just noticed on the ceiling yeah. there, 
all of those bars are acoustic yeah, yeah, yeah. bars, so they're designed to scatter any echo in here. Otherwise, yes. it would get unbearable in here, but it's full of sound damping. Yep. Uh, so yeah, really good. Look, that gate line is open. We need to go through. Let's yeah. do this. Let's do it. It's too exciting for words. Brand new station. Look at how pretty it is. Did you notice, guys, by the way, um, when we got on the escalators, they sped up. Yeah. They were almost, they were almost stopped. And then when we got on, they started to yeah, move. It's kind up. of cool, isn't it? It's really good for energy, like energy efficiency. Energy saving. Yeah. I like it. And I like the fact, actually, that the light oh. is really subdued. Look at this. This is posh. Reminds me a bit of Bermondsey Station Box. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Also, look at that. That's going to be so much easier to change the bulb than if it was up there. Absolutely. Oh, look at the roundel on the side there. It's really cool, isn't it? Look uh, at that. Shiny and new. Filming frantically. Look at that. Nine elms just there. Wow. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, it's a very straightforward design, but it's really effective, isn't it? Look at the escalators. I was just thinking. Look at that. With That's the glass in really, front of it, it's a really, really um, cool, really cool shot, isn't and it? And the platforms, Ialo. 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 <laughs> Do you know, really, really straightforward again, but I really like the look at that. Look at the, f oh my goodness. Reminds me a little bit of Canary Wharf. Yeah, mm. I'm like a kid on this sweet shop. You are, I do, I do love the energy though. It's very exciting. It's, it's really, <gasps> big roundel. Oh my gosh. Look at, <laughs> wow, look at the big roundel. Oh wow. Those That's really cool. But also, is it just me or are these, this is Johnston 100, isn't it? It will be, because, so this is a, a, a yeah. of course, Johnston, A variation. But it's a slight variation because you see it's just a bit, I don't know, there's something... It's just different. different. Do you know what I mean? It feels yeah. thicker. Yeah. Thicker. It is a chunkier type face. It is chunky. I tell you what this is giving me a vibe of. It's a slight kind of New York subway feel with these pillars. Mm. Um, there's just something about looking down it. What about yeah. Edward Woodward <laughs> in you the are Equalizer? The equalizer. <laughs> I could be, couldn't I? Amazing. <laughs> Edward it's really, Cube. It's really pretty, isn't it? So yeah, when I was doing the track walk, uh, I walked up that tunnel there uh, to so you're the, going the platform. <clears throat> and there's a nice little feature about these platforms, which I, I learned, which is they are all full height. So you don't have the accessibility platform ah, button. You They're don't also. have any of but the hump. Can you think of the problem that that causes? Um, I hate it when you ask me questions. Anybody? <laughs> what, is it? what would that Air. be? If you get on at this station and then you get to... Oh, you're in the wrong place. Right. You're in the wrong place. Uh, so if we walk the length of the platform, we right. should find a marker for saying where the step-free access point is so that you will line up with all, with the, all the other other platform oh, buttons God. at other stations. And, and Attention you, to detail, right? Well, and you know the tube map thing? You know the tube map <laughs> thing where you see tube maps that you've never seen before? Look at it on the wall over I, there. I, it's I like so this complicated. One there's, there's no tube map. Zero information, <laughs> none needed. But look at this over here. Look, uh, look, come and have a look at this. You love your maps. Look how complicated the Northern Line looks now. That is incredible. Can you getting your phone out and taking pictures? Oh my now, goodness! When I was uh, when I was heading into uh, the station on the uh, on the night train in yep. here, I was there thinking, oh, this now means that the Northern Line has got a lot of ends to it. If you count them up, there's yeah. five. And uh, imagine if the Northern Heights had gone ahead. Right. Yeah. Now I was then thinking, oh, now where else has got that many? And I was thinking the only two contenders are district and metropolitan. Which of those do you think has got more ends to it? It's like a mini Nick's quiz today, isn't it? <laughs> this is amazing. Answer, is it the Met? Is it the Met? Is it the district? It's line? the district. It's line. the district. You've got line. things yeah. like Olympia That's as well. Right. But, but um, the Met has the same number. The Met, right? Yeah. So okay. uh, there you are. But imagine if you were new to London, or you're a tourist, or you know you've just arrived. 
That would be quite complicated oh, yeah. to, to kind of fathom and break down, wouldn't it? I mean, you'd get there in the end. It would all be fine. But I love as well. What a great, what a great line. Oh, yeah. Look and at that. And a tiny little bit of detail. Look at that. Between, if you can look between Kennington and Oval, there will be peak hour trains, presumably, going between Kennington and Oval towards Morden via Charing Cross. Because there's a little dotty line. I love the tiny bits of detail in these yeah. maps. And I just look down there. As you say, it's so pristine and beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love it. I, I absolutely love it. And it's so... It, look at the atrium as well. Yeah. It's huge. I love the, the, the kind of use of the, the kind of... Is it, I assume this is glass. Yeah. Um, glass. But the kind of reflective nature of that so that it feels bigger. You're going to, you yeah. know, the light and the also, mirroring. how about this one? Black glass on the Northern Line. Last time that happened. Yeah. City and South London Railway tiles. Oh, yeah. nice. Um, now, one last thing for you. Last little quiz. Oh, oh, the oh. Night, why are the roundels on a white background? Oh. Oh. Well, is it as simple as that it pops yeah, better in terms of colour and oh. yeah. it's just nice accessibility? Or so we that completely you can see them. I mean, it's there, rare I get this question <laughs> right. Woohoo! I think, I was I like, think everybody is doing it, everybody in their head. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful, it's absolutely gorgeous. And look, not one train at the moment. It'll be a little while. Turtle. The, the countdown would be about a week. Turtle first. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. So, oh, so it's cool. shiny and new and bright Did you catch it when you were doing the film earlier? Did you look up the escalators? Because it's so cool. You know, we did This actually. shot here. We Sid, didn't. have a look at this, baby. Because this is just, I mean, really. Let us get our high vis out the way. Yeah, I was just have another a look. little photo. See, uh, this is so bad, isn't it, really? Come on, Alex. You know what this Stop actually it. reminds me of? This reminds me of the Stockholm metro system because they have really deep stations and they're all kind of built with concrete because the the ground in Stockholm is a lot rockier and they've all got these like big escalators that go up. It is it a great shot. It really reminds me of Stockholm. There we go. I've never been, I'd love to go. There's your view. Oh Laura, a feast for the eyes that Nine Elms, wasn't it? It absolutely was. It was shiny and it was new and it was great having Chris there to give us all of the little kind of bits of detail uh, in the design and kind of that thought process that's gone on. Um, and I mean, I had so many questions about why is this like this? Why is that like that? And obviously in the clips, you'll see kind of Chris explaining. And what I think is really lovely as well is um, that we, we, we just got to see it before the public went in. So it was so it felt untouched, didn't it? It felt like this is where it's gonna begin. This is where the stories are gonna start. And I know it's been an epic journey to get to the opening um, and the whole team with COVID as well have just worked so, so super hard. Um, but the four of us, I think were just kind of literally walking around like mouths open, just stunned by the thought process and the detail and just how, how untouched it is at the moment. And Sid, the, the thing that I loved about the exterior and the street was that it was so reminiscent, as you said, of Charles Holden, that absolutely iconic architect of London's underground. I know, right? It had that kind of grandeur of the 1930s stations of the London underground, but with its kind of modern twist and touch, obviously a lot bigger, spacious, very airy and roomy, but I love that they've done that as a bit of a nod to Charles Holden. I mean, it really almost looked like, you know, Acton Town or, or some of those stations, but on a grander scale. And then going down that escalator, that big advertisement panel and the beautiful kind of lining of the, of the, of the walls just really gave it this kind of, I don't know, yeah, like a plunging effect, like you're going into the depth it's really an amazing, amazing station. It was glorious. Chris, it was a, it's a, just a lovely station all in all, isn't it, really? I'm so close to Little Portugal, uh, that amazing place where there's wonderful restaurants. So you can go there for that, if nothing else. But the station itself just looks a feast for the eyes, isn't it? it it's a stunner. I, I had to be so restrained when I'd been there a couple of nights before in A, not posting any of it on Instagram, and uh, two, not ruining the surprise for you guys when you you went to visit but i think that um the return of that kind of grand clear story uh type entrance to a station is is a welcome return nice nice to see holden dripped in there but that for me it's a real flashback to almost exactly you know 20 years ago 
uh, when I was first here for the Jubilee line extension, because the, these stations feel very much like that, but with a good sprinkling of uh, historical nod to uh, the good architecture of the past. You hinted at it, Chris, it has driven us mad not posting about this on Instagram. My phone is absolutely full of amazing photographs. And we were read the riot act about this as a media blackout until today, which is why we are so excited to be among the first to be able to show you this stuff. Now, our trip didn't end at Nine Elms. Of course it didn't. It terminated at Battersea Power Station. So we walked there because the line was shut. And when we got there, this is what we saw. Forget your Kenningtons via Charing Cross. From now on, Battersea Power Station via Charing Cross is the new kid on the block. And here is where you will emerge into the blue skies of our capital city. It's so exciting that we get to be here before the public gets to use the station. It's so lovely, isn't it? It is. Now, I've had a sneaky peek at this already overnight uh, while they, I came in on a train uh, when they were doing some training. So it's, um, it looks a lot different in daylight, uh, rather nice. Uh, I'm really keen to see what it looks like in the ticket hall with the light flooding in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty special station. Glorious big round and of course, Sid's the icon. Mm -hmm. Battersea Power Station's right over there, but should we, we go inside? Get in, get in, yeah. Get in let's, go, let's go where the public can't see. Let's have a look. I always think Pink Floyd. When I pink that. Floyd, but not pink, it's blue. No. Deep blue, deepest blue actually. Yeah. So it's like a nine different elms. blue colour totally. than Nine Elms. Totally. In we go, down the escalators. Oh, look at that. Golden. Smaller than Nine Elms, but. Golden roof. Loving the gold. Beautiful, Loving the gold. I always feel like an estate agent doing this. <laughs> wow. And you know what? This, when you get to this height and you mm. see how huge this was, chamber is. Yeah, you know what I was just thinking? This reminds me of Canary Wharf again. You know, when you come down into Canary Wharf before you go back down onto the platform level, this is kind of the vibe that you get, isn't it? Do you know what it reminds me of as well? Mm. A power station. It I actually like that. looks like, like a power station it. with the chimneys and the, and the pillars. Yeah. It really does look reminiscent of a power station. I love the ceiling as well. Slightly Chris zigzag. always tells us about the ceilings, doesn't he? Yeah, and I like this artwork that's just kind of slowly changing around the station. It's it is really glorious, beautiful. isn't it? It is glorious, glorious, glorious. Chris, tell us a bit about the ceiling because there's always a reason for ceilings like this, isn't there? Yeah, so these roofs, um, it's reminiscent of somewhere like uh, London Bridge on the Jubilee Line extension. And basically, the more you can have wavy surfaces, the more it scatters echoes. Yeah. So it can go into the sound damping material that's around us, hidden away in panels. And it just means that what would otherwise be an echoey cave, it's actually really nice yeah. you can have a conversation like this. Much more pleasant to be in, especially with a lot of people. Something I know there's the only echo four echo. of us, but the, you know. Do you know, you were talking about the, uh, the artwork here. What I love about the way this kind of ripple changes the colours reminds me, if you know when you're in station, old stations and they had those destination boards? Yeah, clack boards. You used to go clickety clack clickety clack and change around to different destinations. It's a bit like that. And City also noticed as well, because City's on camera, hello gorgeous. And we've got the two sides of this, is that the, the deeper colours, it's funny, Sid, because it's, it's done the same there. It's gone really pastily on one side. Yeah, and I, it's think it, I think it must rotate around. It's like a Mexican entire. wave all yeah. the way yeah, around. Just change colour. As yeah, we speak. Look at that. There it's it really, really cool. It's like, um, do you remember James Bond's rotating number plate on the uh, DB5? It's, it's that. <laughs> that was a Mexican wave. I was like, to be. thought that was you doing the number plate. <laughs> is that the, the number plate? Is that new dance? Uh, City was also talking about the, uh, these ticket machines being very, very different to the ones we're used to, aren't Swanky. they? Swanky. Touch screen. Very, very nice. Very st uh, do you know what? I suddenly realised no one's touched this, have they? No. Well, of course, also. No, doesn't work anyway. <laughs> but you know what? It's beautiful. It's, it's, I, I love the, the fact that it's so brand new. There's not even finger marks on these things. Well, I've, there is now on there. But yeah. It's one of the few floors that I would quite happily, uh, went, in fact, did kneel on earlier. Or eat your dinner off. It's, uh, it's just vast, isn't it? Can we carry on walking? Yeah, yeah. let's I'm go so downstairs, excited. I reckon. I'm so excited. So excited. So through the gate line. All Down. open, obviously. I actually just said downstairs. Let's yeah. go downstairs. Let's go like downstairs. So if we do, the layout is different to Nine Elms. You've got two directions here. So, yeah, Alex, you need to put on your, uh, your training. <laughs> so uh, which side should we, should we go down, guys? Your choice. That one? Eeny right. meeny. Let's do it. Oh, Grundy's chosen it. this Let's side. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, stunning. It's the escalator thing again, Northern isn't it? Northern line. It's exciting. 
and I just once again I mean look at the it's just such a dramatic nice. bit of architecture look, look at it it's got like an atrium around it so look, the escalator's on pause, a little pausey slow thing again. It's amazing how actually how the sound changes, isn't it, when they Whoosh! get quicker. Yeah. And off they go. And the noise picks up as well. I just think it's so dramatic. For something very geometric, the, the design is incredibly geometric. Mm. But it's so dramatic as you drop down. Ooh, what does this remind me of? This is giving me Canada water vibes. And I tell you what I really love about this, this is a very, very sexy platform area because it's all dark colours. It it's is very really, dark. really late night and funky. Yeah. Really love it. You know, it's a bit lighter at Nine Elms, isn't it? But this one, yeah, this one is has dark. a more of a, more of a noir. It's oh. got a noir feel to and it. Just seriously, just look at I'm so, I'm such a tourist. That Look at beautiful. that, it's stunning. It's quite bizarre being in a space. <clears throat> you know when you've travelled either quite late at night or early in the morning and so stations are naturally quieter. Yeah. But this has just got, it's got more of a, it's just that brand new feeling. It's yeah. gorgeous. It's, it's really kind of quite hard to articulate. So now because this is obviously a terminus, right guys, so mm -hmm. yep. both sides are going to get trains in and then it's going to be like at Brixton or other stations where you'll have to just see which is the first one to leave. And here, now that we're on the, the platform area, you can see this feature that oh, is added in. Yeah. The reason that they've got such big running tunnels is because they've got an emergency walkway now yeah. uh, for in case they have to detrain oh, in the tunnel. How much better would that be? We've done so many track walks. I was going to say, it was the easiest track walk I've ever done oh, uh, that like, is uh, when great. I was going from here to Nine Elms because yeah. it's just walking on that. Should we walk down further? You can, but look at that. That is the end of the That's line. the end of it, yeah. That's your end of line, down there. Mm. It's fascinating. Let's go on, let's have a walk. So it's worth saying that uh, these stations haven't been fitted with platform edge doors, yeah. uh, but they are fitted with just about every modern thing that you would expect to find, so for yeah. example, on Crossrail or any other state-of-the-art system. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the fire detection systems, the, uh, the air handling, all of this kind of the stuff that people don't think about that makes it a very safe, comfortable station. Oh my goodness, even <laughs> the poster frames are beautiful and new. Look at that, it's they are really smart. Or is that going to be back so Chris, there? going back to the doors, is the reason that the doors haven't been fitted at either here or Nine Elms because all of the other features are so top of their game that that reduces the need that, for the doors. That's exactly right. it. Okay. Yeah. So here you can see you've got this kind of shelf here. So God forbid there were a, a fire on a train, that would be enough to get rid of the smoke out of it. Whereas the, uh, the stations on the Jubilee line are, most of them are built still in tunnels. So you've got like at London Bridge, there isn't really the space to get So that the door is the, the next yeah. best thing yeah. to Just do. smile and look at the camera, guys. Mm. I know this is on telly, but my goodness, that is a really cool photograph. <laughs> well done. I'm sorry I'm holding the camera, but my goodness, I'd love to be in that shot. You look great. I love getting excited in these places. Can we just have a look over there? Not least of all, yeah. at the complete Northern Line map. Because oh, yeah. this is the one with Battersea Power Station on. And once again, the phone comes out because I have to take yeah. a photograph. We have this amazing, lovely enamel map, Bassey Power Station, Nine Elms. It's so exciting to think this. The potential, where well, the oldest tube line in London has just been given the newest arm. Yeah. Isn't that lovely? What's also interesting is, do you see the, uh, the dotted line? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we do yeah. have a potential to go from Charing Cross to Morden at peak times, I suppose. Mm. Two lovely maps, and then this side, platform one, all stations to uh, Edgware. Oh, look, you're on the level access boarding point. And here it is. Ah. But, uh, so this is what you were saying at Nine Elms. Uh, yeah. You have to look at, if, if you do need these facilities, you need to look for that on the floor in order to make sure it marries up with stations that are not equal That's it. height. Basically, or that door and that door that line up on there will meet up with the, the platform raised platform humps, humps or buttons uh, that you'll find at I other stations. I really love this dark wall, by the way. It's it really looks very, good, doesn't it? Uh, very on point oh, at the moment, oh, isn't yeah, it? That's it really, a dark grey. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And, oh, look at that again, very the freeze. Too. There's a nice drama to the way the light's being used here, isn't yeah. there? So yeah. the 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 station name just pops right out. Uh, if you think going back to 
you know, when that was being done on the freezes, on the, uh, what was the Bakerloo is now the Jubilee, yeah. on, uh, um, you know, places like Green Park and Baker Street. Mm. There it is. It's a great idea, just done in modern form. And uh, it, it, by not lighting the rest of it so intently, your name is it's your, gorgeous. your eye is drawn straight to the name. It's absolutely it's, gorgeous. It's interesting because they've they've done it still in the same colour palette as a lot of the new stations. All the refurbishments that are being done on the on the underground with this kind of gold. You've got the dark colours. You've got the blue. But think about this though. This is very much in the same vein of the Jubilee line extension. Yeah. This is going to stand the test of time for yeah. quite some time, I think. It is. It's good materials. Um, uh, the colour palette, you're right, the, the dark grey and the gold colour are very of the moment. In the mm. same way, the Jubilee line used few colours of the moment. You yeah. think about North Greenwich with the blues and terracottas yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was very, very yeah. 90s. But yeah, I, I can see this looking really good in another 20 years time it's when beautiful. we all come back. Absolutely <laughs> beautiful. So there you are. Battersea Power Station. Mm. Should we uh, go and see the other end just for sheer good measure? Just because we can, because let's face it, this place is absolutely desolate. No member of the public has boarded a train here yet, and we got here before they did, and that is so blooming cool. Mm. And because we were here, it view. means you're here. I just love it. I just love this place. So quiet. Isn't it? Can you imagine it? Everything now we've walked quiet away again. from the escalators. Yeah, so quiet. Quick, we can be the first to sit on the seats. <laughs> <laughs> Never do this. So, looking at this lovely, lovely updated map, mm -hmm. I want to know from you guys, what's your favourite station on this oh, map? Come on, easy. Well, for you, it's Kentish Town. It right? is, but also Angel, because that's the one you keep dangling like a carrot, carrot. against this horse. Mm. Siddles? It's very tricky. Very tricky. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh it's going to be a long episode. I know. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> Do you know what? I'm going to go weird and say Elephant and Castle, because he used to live there. Right. I think that's a good one, though. And the yep. tiles. That's a good one. And tiles. tiles as well. It's beautiful. Yeah. What about you, Nixie? Uh, I'm going to go bank because oh. of the project that's going on there right now yeah. and King William Street is kind of become part of it. So, ka -ching. We've got them all, haven't we? Time to uh, head up and out, I think. Back up those team. escalators. Yeah. Right, let's head. Let's do this. Let's do the right one. <laughs> I think, Sids, I think Battersea was my favourite because it just screams power station, power everywhere, didn't it? It, it was very powerful. Uh, I, I, I agree with you. Well, it had a sense of um, space in a different way that Nine Elms does because Nine Elms has got that big open atrium and straight down to the platforms whereas Battersea's got that down then the media level which is very spacious with that beautiful artwork and then down to kind of separate levels so yeah I think I agree with you I think I liked Battersea a bit more but only because there was a, a slight warmth to Battersea that um that I thought was different from Nine Elms. It was it reminded me actually you know uh, Laura you'll get this when you go to the Tate Britain, is it no Tate Modern in Bankside yep. Power Station, and you go into that big motor room where all the gubbins was once upon a time, it reminded me of being there. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. the power Hall. Yeah, the Power I, Hall. I think I think both stations um, are they're contemporary and they're bold. Um, and they've got character and they're going to have nice personalities of their own. They are quite different, even though there are so many similarities in the design. But I think the natural fabric of that space just lends themselves slight, slightly different characteristics. So I see why you're going with Battersea uh, that you two are. But um, I'm going to I'm going to go Nine Elms just because it's the first one that we saw. Um, and I really loved the. Um, that little nod to the Northern line with the black glass. Um, I mean, they've both got so many lovely features um, and they're both so contemporary in their, I guess their advertisement as well, because all the poster boards look like they're going to be digital. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's just such, um, you know, it's the Northern line extension, but it's just an extension of the design that we've spoken about so many times in the episodes, just, 
just kind of tweaking itself kind of to more contemporary, but with that nod towards Holden, which is, I think, a really difficult balance. And they've, I think they've struck a good one, to be fair. And it's really interesting as well, because when you think about the Northern Line broadly, if you look at the map, as we saw in that film, the Northern Line now sprawls. It goes all over the place, it's like an octopus with loads and loads of tentacles on the end. And the thing that really struck me about the, the Northern Line now is it contains the oldest bit of deep level tube network and the newest bit, all in one line. And that's really quite remarkable for what is my favourite line. Now, Chris, when we were in Battersea Power Station, we, at the station itself, we really were struck by the future proofing of the design. In 20 years time, this is still going to look glorious, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we, we referenced that while we were there, that the um, we felt that the design had a solidity to it and a... Uh, enough of a timelessness that they would look good in 20 years and and um, certainly the case with the Jubilee line extension stations they've fared very well they've had some modifications to you know make them flow better and uh, deal with a few teething issues but by and large they're as they were back then and I think that that's remarkable they will stand the test of time. It's wonderful final thoughts Laura on our day that day the the permission slip was granted to see something before anybody else. Instead of chasing our tail and looking at things from years and years ago, we were there ahead of the curve. How did it feel? I mean, super lucky, you know me, I love a story. I love a journey. I love kind of be, feeling like, like you're immersed in that story and that journey as well. And we do it so well with Hidden London and the Hangouts because we get to go to these kind of beautiful historical places that are just throwing kind of information and stories at us. But I felt really privileged to be part of just the start of this one and that we got to see that space and I do have a question for Chris as well which is on a scale of one to ten how nostalgic are you feeling about kind of feeling like it's all come full circle that you started your tours and you're kind of still back in these spaces doing this now um off the nostalgia scale Laura and I have to say <laughs> that the, it, it really is that's, that's exactly how I feel and the the other thing is having visited these sites when they were at the start of their co construction or at least very near it back in 2017 it was great to go back and see what these holes in the ground have become lovely 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 and Sid. What do you think of it, really? We put our boots on, but we didn't really need them. We could have worn slippers around there. <laughs> you know, I agree with Chris. I feel like this project has really um, just, they, they, they've really made us proud within TFL because it's just, the station's beautiful. They are, they're sleek and they're well-designed and they look love like they just look so kind of, I don't know, I, I I mean this in a very lovely way, like understated, classy and luxurious. They are lovely. And I think that is really going to change um, things for us here in Southwest London, because, you know, it's just going to improve so much, particularly for that area. And I and yeah, I can't wait to see what it's going to be like. I can't wait to travel on it. Understated, classy and luxurious. That's our city. Now, you've seen the fancy stuff. We wanted to show you some of the other stuff. And um, really, it's about the construction and how it all came about, because heavens above, this has been a huge project and COVID got in the way in the middle of it and they still pulled it off. Chris, some amazing photographs to show as well, haven't we? Yeah. So back in 2017, uh, I was lucky enough to go to the work sites or some of them um, with our patrons, our museum patrons. And we got to go down into the construction sites uh, in two places. Now, first off, this is um, Kennington Park, and that's where one of the big construction shafts was, was built for the site uh, in order to access the Kennington Loop uh, to do that breakout work uh, to allow the, the line to break off from it. To say it was big <sighs> is to understate it. You can just wow. down at the bottom of that shaft. I think it was, if I remember correctly, it was about 22 metres down, something like that. Uh, so not small and big enough to be able to load machinery into it. Uh, but the tunnels were, were not dug by a tunnel boring machine. This is hand digging. Yeah, what, this is weird, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, what they were doing was building an access tunnel uh, to, to head off uh, to the, uh, I think the tunnel that's kind of at the top of the screen is the one that was pointing towards uh, no, sorry, it's the one at the bottom of the screen is the one that was heading off towards uh, Kennington, uh, towards the loop. 
And so, so what you're seeing there, just to just to explain, I'm so sorry to, to interrupt. What you saw just there was looking down, effectively mm -hmm. intersecting one of the running tunnels. Is that right? Uh, no, uh, so, yeah, looking down to the bottom of the shaft, those are two new construction tunnels that are being built. Mm -hmm. And the one, I think it was the one off the bottom of the screen, was the one that was heading to intercept the next shot. Uh, so if you walk down that tunnel, it came to this area that they're <gasps> dug out around the Kennington Loop. So Kennington is to the, the right in this shot, uh, yeah. and this is the outside of the Kennington Loop, as you can see, supported by uh, by girders and, and, uh, and chocks to hold it in place. And what they did was dig up to it and then dig around it, because what they're doing was creating the step plate junction, which is basically widening a tunnel out in, in steps uh, and making it big enough to take a set of points and the two tunnels coming out of it. Uh, so this this is basically now where the where this camera is, is where the trains will come through to go down to Nine Elms and beyond. Wonderful. I've got a question for you as well. And it's interesting to see tunnels being made because it looks like they've just been sprayed with concrete. Is that about right? Um, it, it's because when these were originally built in the ground, the tunneling shield that's used to protect the workers that they're digging inside then has these lining rings fitted inside and it leaves a gap in the ground, the space of that extra diameter of that shield leaves a gap in the ground and that's why you would get settlement because the ground will then collapse and shrink around it over time so what they do is they through holes in the lining rings they inject uh, what's called grout it's basically a fast setting cement and that is what you get left on the outside of the rings they've chipped it off but it still leaves the stain on the outside of the rings. Amazing. Mm. What more have we got? What more pictures have um, we got, Chris? Well, of a th through. This was one of those little photo breaks that I had to do at the time, which was to uh, put my hand on the outside mm. of the tunnel and feel the Northern Line trains rumbling yeah. past inside that tube. So is that is a cast iron segment that's been there since the 1920s. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing. cool. So, so cool. That I was mean, one know, of those I mean, moments. People wonder why we love what we do. <laughs> what else have we got, Chris? I well, want Chris to do like a magic trick or something in those gloves as well while he's done. Marcel there. Marceau. <laughs> <laughs> if only through the magic of editing, I could then make it appear to dissolve when a train gets past. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Spend a day doing that in After Effects, but I'm not going to. Uh, so instead, we're going to go to Battersea Power Station when that was under construction. There you go. That's wow. 2017. Oh. Um, so they call There's it so much going pop. on there. To think that's now a station law. I mean, you know, the, the, the transformation is remarkable, isn't it? Yeah, that I mean, that transformation is epic. That I mean, the, the space and the time and I just I can't my, my head can't fathom how you start this kind of project and end up with the beautiful yeah. kind of sleek station that you do that the, just the work. Um, mm. But yeah, awesome. <laughs> Yeah, no, but then also look at Battersea Power Station itself. It's missing all of that big stuff that they've built now. So, wow, they've done a really quick job at this, haven't they? <laughs> well, I mean, four years, but still, that's amazing. I mean, they're almost as industrious as us through three lockdowns, aren't they? That's amazing. I know. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> what right. else we got, Christoph? In the foreground, you've just got the pile of tunnel lining rings that are about to go in to start creating the tunnels. Oh, okay. um, yeah. And if we... Uh, if we drop down to this, this is just slightly to the left of where the entrance to the station is now. So that bit where we first went in. Amazing. What else we got? Well, um, you can't have Tritons there without the tunnels. So uh, oh. when I was there, one of the tunnel boring machines had already set off up the, the northbound uh, side. And um, the on the right-hand side, you can just see the by that orange uh digger um the start of the second tunnel boring machine that was about to set off and there it is it was just being prepped and loaded and the day after we were there it was due to launch and start digging i love it absolutely love it thank you so um, very much i believe um, that the uh the tunnel boring machines were named after two uh, famous people. Siddy, give us the names. <laughs> the, so the tunnel boring machines were called Helen and Amy. Uh, Helen after Helen Sharman, who was the first 
female British astronaut and Amy Johnson, who was the first female pilot to fly from London to Australia. So Helen and Amy, that's really lovely. And lots of tunnel borrow machines are called Helen, aren't they, Chris? Uh, so it would seem, yes. I think there was one on uh, Crossrail Project as well, wasn't yeah. there? Yeah. We're not it's saying Helen's are boring, name. but uh, we'd love uh, the fact that they all get lovely names. And um, thank you so much for that lovely a deck of amazing photographs, Chris. Chris. Um, we know that this is being premiered on a Monday. You may be at work evading the boss. So we're keeping this nice and short today and concise. Very, very quick notes, queries and questions. If you've never watched one of our Hangouts before, at the end of every episode, we give you the chance to ask questions of us and see if we can get you some answers about trivia on the tube, things you want to know and places that you might like us to go. And Chris, while you were down at the, um, at the extension, one of the members of staff asked you a very... Um, entertaining question about a certain showbiz comedian and actor <laughs> yes indeed and we, we should just quickly say thank you to Alex Garnett Shearer who uh, gave gave access uh, to the train side of it and also to Carl Painter uh, the area manager who gave us access to the stations early but uh, while I was there Alex asked the question um, about a famous Julian uh, working on the tube. Now, uh, he was saying that there is, a, it's mistakenly rumoured that Julian Clary uh, worked as a guard at Parsons Green. Uh, and that's because that's confused with Julian Howells, who was a, a guard who worked uh, at, um, at Parsons Green. And um, he was asking, can you find out where Julian Clary actually did work as a guard on the tube? And I said, well, I, I don't know, but I know a man in showbiz who can and messaged Alex at some unearthly hour in the uh, in the morning. Indeed. So, Alex. I don't know whether Julian Howells has ever opened in Chichester, uh, <laughs> but that's where Julian Clary is at the moment. And uh, he's uh, currently treading the boards. But through the lovely Joe Good at BBC Radio London, we did have a little chat with uh, Julian and I can guarantee He's never been a guard on the tube, never at Parsons Green, never at any depot. He's never done it. So worry not. Julian Clary did not ask you to mind the doors and close the doors once upon a time, Chris. Do you, do you reckon we could get him to, to do it for a day? <laughs> I think given his reaction when he was asked whether or not he was actually a guard, I don't know whether we could ever broadcast it, but I love the idea <laughs> of it. Absolutely amazing. And uh, we did get some other comments as well. As I say, we're keeping it nice and short today. So um, Jay says, absolutely love these looks around stations that we pass every day and don't know what's behind the hidden doors. Could we have my home station of Caledonian Road? I've always wanted to see inside the old block tech set and the fact that it's still got the original roundel on the platform. Since we could do that, couldn't we? The oh, I'd love to. Yeah. And there's some interesting, there's some beautiful tiles. It's a very unusual tiling pattern there. And the colours are really quite neat. Um, I say we do it. Marvellous stuff. And uh, Sid, thank you so much for coming on this odyssey with us today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And I can't wait for all, all of us to go ride on the Northern Line extension. I think we should go to that pub opposite Battersea Power Station, don't you? It's beautiful with all the flowers in front of it. Laura, thank you so much for coming as well. It was so nice to share that little um, home design moment with you. Absolute pleasure. It was uh, it was a really, really good site visit. Um, and Chris, thank you for going on Friday. Um, it was a shame we all had other stuff on, but um, I'm sorry it was a bit of a late night, but great clips and great pictures. So thank you. Chris, as always, thank you just for being brilliant and putting all this together and actually doing the big negotiations with TfL to get us to this point where we could actually showcase these two stations. Uh, well, what, what a privilege to be able to do this. This, this doesn't come very often in, in a career. Um, you can very easily uh, you know, do, a, do a career at the museum and, and not get to do this. I've had the privilege of being there for two extension lines opening, and this is just fabulous and urge everybody uh, watching this to go and try it for themselves. Beautiful stuff. If you want to find out more about what we're up to, you usually get a few hints and tips about where we're going next. Find us on Instagram, Alex Grundon, Chris Nix, City Holloway, Hidden London Law and LT Museum. And don't forget on YouTube, you found us. So like below, subscribe and comment and also set reminders so you know exactly when our next episodes are coming up. Always Saturdays at six, unless you've got a bit of a special episode. Um, one final message, and I was looking back through some of the other episodes about comments that have been made. And this came from one person. I won't say who you are, you know exactly who you are. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. You've really helped me get through lockdown and some really tough times. Your hard work is appreciated. And I hope you can keep on bringing us these great insights into the bits of London we'll never be able to see ourselves. Thank you so much. Back to work, everybody. Have yourself a great day and stay safe. 
Now we did say this was hidden London and not just it's like really partially.